The Nightwood by Robin Muller to John Pierce, Maggie Reeves, and Helen Ma for their enthusiasm and support. Beware of the elves who come in the night to visit your dreams and give you a fright. Beware of the elves and their magical queen who turns joy to sorrow and laughter to pain. Beware of the elves. All children must learn. If you stray in the woods, you may never return. Long ago, there stood a forest, deep, green, and beautiful. Sunlight danced along its paths, bird songs filled its cool, leafy spaces, and children played beneath its shade. One night, a mist came rolling down from the north. Hidden in the silver gloom rode a strange, unearthly band. At their head was a spirit creature, wondrous and terrible to behold. Her skin was the color of fresh cream, but her eyes were as black as pitch. The mist and its riders passed over the countryside like a shadow, then came to rest in the very heart of the forest. By dawn, thick clumps of briar had sprung up, choking every glade and dell. Mocking voices echoed along the ancient trees, coaxing travelers from their paths. Children who went to play beneath the forest burrows were never seen again. Even brave knights, daring to explore the secrets of the wood, vanished. Only their empty armor was ever found, broken and pierced by thorns. As time passed, the branches of the trees grew so tangled that no daylight could penetrate its depths. The forest was given a new name, the Nightwood. For leagues around, people were warned never to go there, for the forest had become the home of the dreaded Elfin Queen. Near the Nightwood stood a castle, the home of the Earl of March and his daughter Elaine. A merrier maiden could not be found, always teasing her old nurse by dancing amongst the trees at the Nightwood's edge. You're as wild as the Earl of Roxborough's son, scolded the old woman. He was warned about the forest, but one moonlit night he strayed beneath the Nightwood's shadow and vanished in the gloom. No one has seen hide nor hair of him for nearly seven years. Your nursery stories don't frighten me, laughed Elaine. But to stop your worrying, she said sweetly. I'll sit still and practice my needlework and prove to you how good I can be. Elaine took up her needlework and started to embroider the image of a handsome young knight. But as soon as the nurse busied herself with her tasks, Elaine let the needle slip and gazed out over the battlements towards the night wood. One bright spring morning, the Earl announced that there was to be a great ball in honor of a company of visiting knights. At last, cried Elaine, I shall attend a ball. I'll unbraid my hair and put on my prettiest gown and dance till my slippers are in tatters. You will do no such thing, said her father sternly. The company of knights is no place for a child. I'm not a child, protested Elaine. I'm a young woman, and I want to dance at the ball. But her father was unmoved. On the night of the festivities, Elaine sat alone. From her window, she could see the night wood spreading like a dark sea under the moon's glow. As she gazed at the swaying treetops, Elaine saw lights, bright as shooting stars, flashing on the evening breeze, and voices from the shadows beckoned to her. Come and dance. Come and dance. I will come, answered Elaine. She wrapped her cloak around her and swept down the stairs. The great hall blazed with light as lords and ladies pranced in a noisy reel. From where she hid, Elaine could hear her father telling a group of nobles how his child wanted to attend the ball. Why, he laughed, it was only yesterday she was learning to walk. Elaine's heart grew cold with fury at his words. The elfin court is also holding a ball, she murmured. If I cannot dance at my father's ball, then I will dance at the elfin queen's. Quietly, Elaine pulled open the castle door and stole into the night. Guided by the moon, Elaine made her way till the forest loomed before her, stern and black. As she stepped into its darkness, a hand shot out, seizing her wrist, pulling her aside. Elaine gasped as she looked into the face of a haggard old woman, bent and clothed in rags. Leave while you can, the woman hissed. This is no place for a pretty lass like you. I'm on my way to the Elfin Queen's Ball, cried Elaine. So let me go. She broke free of the woman's grasp and dashed into the woods. As Elaine raced forward, the gentle breeze turned into a fierce gale, driving her along like a dry leaf. 
Thorns ripped her clothing, roots tripped at her, and branches slashed her face. Stop! Please, stop! she cried out as she tumbled to the ground. I only want to dance! I only want to join the ball! As suddenly as it began, the wind ceased. Elaine found herself in a small clearing, shimmering in the moonlight. Directly in front of her grew a single rose bush, like none she had ever seen. Each blossom glowed in the night as if possessed of its own flame. In wonder, Elaine got to her feet and approached the glowing bush. The blossoms seemed to pulse to the beating of her heart. She reached out, snapped a stem, and drank in the flower's fragrance. Who dares pick the favorite flower of the Elfin Queen? Elaine spun around. Before her stood a handsome youth, curiously dressed with nine tinkering bells swinging from his belt. I dare, she said. I am Elaine, daughter of the Earl of March, who is master of all these lands, including, she added haughtily, this forest. The youth laughed and made a low bow. Pardon me, Earl of March's daughter. I had not expected such an important visitor. I am Tamlin, favored knight of the Elven Queen. It is my duty to guard this bush against all intruders. The flowers bloom only on the night when the moon is full, and only by carrying one can a mortal enter and leave the Elven land in safety. If the Queen knew you had plucked a rose, her anger would be terrible. Tamlin gazed longingly at Elaine. But I will not betray one so bold. How may I serve you? I have come to attend the Elfin Queen's ball, Elaine replied. Could you escort me? Tamlin's smile faded. It is perilous for mortals to dance at the Elfin Ball, he said slowly. Even with the flower's protection, most mortals never return, and those who do pine away blind to the beauty of their own world. I am not afraid, Elaine cried eagerly. If you do not take me, I shall find the ball myself, Tamlin sighed. If your heart is set upon it. He took the blossom, gently blew upon it, and set it in her hair. Instantly, the forest changed. Elaine found herself on a broad lawn. Music, stranger, wilder, and sweeter than she had ever heard, rose and fell on the velvet air. At moments, the notes seemed to echo the soft pulse of the forest, the sighs of the wind in the trees, or the deep throbbing of underground rivers. The melodies seemed to swell from every stone and tree. A youth and a maiden stepped into the clearing and floated gracefully around in a great circle. Others joined them, gliding to the music. Who are these dancers? asked Elaine, wonderingly. They moved to the music like people in a slumber. These were once mortal children, replied Tamlin sadly, who stole away into the woods and fell under the enchantment. Children just like you. I am not a child, cried Elaine, and I am not afraid of the music. You said the flower would protect me, so dance with me. She seized Tamlin's arm and led him into the circle. Elaine felt herself swept along between earth and sky. Never had she known such joy. On and on went the elfin revels, as though time had no end. Then, just as Elaine felt she might dance forever, the music came to a sudden halt. You must go, whispered Tamlin. The night is spent and you have visited a forbidden place. Farewell, Elaine. Remember me. He sadly touched the flower in her hair. Everything vanished. Only the gentle tinkling of bells that Tamlin wore at his waist hung in the air. Elaine found herself standing once more at the entrance to the wood. Visiting with elves, said a voice in her ear. The old woman stood by her side, listening to their tales and dancing to their music. And if I was, said Elaine, I am free to do as I wish, and I shall dance if I choose to. Be warned, young lady, she croaked. The elfin queen does not like intruders in her domain. She has the power to drain them of life. If you're not careful, you will become like that shriveled flower in your hair. Elaine felt for the rose, but it was now withered and cracked, crumbling into dust at her touch. Frightened by the change in the flower, Elaine turned and fled. The crone's voice pursued her as she ran. Keep away! Keep away! The cost of visiting here is great! The next day, Elaine's old nurse entered her room, bursting with gossip from the night's festivities. Elaine did not hear a word. 
Though she smiled and nodded politely, Elaine was lost in a dream of the Nightwood and the young knight Tamlin, and so she remained for weeks. On the next full moon, Elaine waited till all were asleep, then raced to the forest's edge. Gingerly, she stepped between the trees, expecting the wind to assault her again, but the air was still. The night wood had been waiting for her. Patches of moonlight guided her to the clearing. Before her stood the bush, its blossoms softly glowing against the darkness. She plucked a rose and instantly Tamlin was beside her. Through the night they danced, the stars spinning above their heads, the music lifting their feet. Together they whirled amongst the dancers. Then at last, dawn's rays tinged the skies, and Elaine was alone. Through the spring and summer, every time the moon was full, Elaine visited the Nightwood. But with each visit, there was a marked change in her appearance. She who had been the flower of her father's court, praised for her beauty and high spirits, now sat listless and withdrawn. Around the castle, the frightened servants huddled together, whispering about Elaine. She has been to the Nightwood. She has danced with the elves. That is why she is so pale. The Earl must not hear of this. But the secret could not be kept. When the Earl realized the truth, he wept. Lock her away, he cried. Watch her day and night. We must keep her from the forest if we are to break this evil spell. Elaine was locked in her room in the tower. Feverish dreams tumbled through her mind. Dreams that the young knight she loved would be taken from her forever. He's calling to me, she would cry, and to some it did seem as if her very name was carried sad and low on the evening breeze. Summer passed into autumn. In the night wood, chill winds swept through the trees, and the leaves covered the ground like a golden carpet. In the tower, Elaine too had changed. She no longer called out for her love, and the color returned to her cheeks. At last she seems to have forgotten. Her elven knight, the old nurse, announced to all who inquired, one night, when the heavy clouds hid the full moon, Elaine called to her nurse, Come and sit with me while I sing. She took her lute and strummed an old lullaby her nurse loved to hear. Soon the old woman was asleep. Slipping the key from the nurse's pocket, Elaine unlocked the door, crept down the staircase, and disappeared into the night. In the clearing, the rose bush that had always summoned Tamlin stood in the cold darkness, bare of leaf and flower. No, cried Elaine. They can't all have faded. A bitter wind whistled through the trees. The clouds parted and a single ray from the moon shone full and bright. Nestled at the heart of the bush was a dry, unopened bud. Quickly, Elaine plucked the bud and kissed it. The warmth of her caress revived the tiny flower, transforming it into a beautiful rose. I feared that you had forgotten me, said Tamlin as he swept from the shadows. My heart broke at the thought we would never meet again. Elaine told him of her imprisonment. If only you were a mortal, she wept. I am a mortal, said Tamlin. I am the son of the Earl of Ruxborough. One night while I was out riding, a terrible storm overtook me. Blinding rain and a great wind forced me from my path. A lightning crack startled my horse and she threw me, then bolted into the night. Bruised and weak, I took shelter in the forest. The elven queen found me and made me a knight of her court. For almost seven years, I have lived in a dream. You have awoken me. Now all I desire is to be at your side. Come with me then, cried Elaine. I cannot, sighed Tamlin sadly. I am under an enchantment. At the end of the seventh year, on All Hallows' Eve, my soul will be forfeit, for it is that of the elven queen and her court have to leave this wood in search of a new home. All mortals caught in her web will become elves forever, creatures of air, unable to laugh or cry or love. Their voice is nothing more than the sad, trustling murmur of wind through the trees. Suddenly Tamlin stiffened and pushed Elaine behind him, hiding the rose in a pocket in her cloak. Coming towards them was a beautiful lady, the loveliest Elaine had ever seen. It was the Elven Queen. Who is this? The Queen asked Tamlin. She smiled graciously when told that Elaine was the daughter of the Earl of March. You are most welcome, my dear, though it is late in the year if you have come to admire my roses. 
Still, we have other entertainments. You must come and join our ball. Taking them both by the arm, she led them away. The lawn had changed, where before it had glowed with silvery light like the arc of a new moon. Now it was like a sunset, red as blood. Tamlin put his arm around Elaine and held her tightly. Round and round they went. The dancers seemed caught in a windless storm. Whirling and tossing like leaves, Elaine's heart shook as the dancers' voices were suddenly raised in song, deafening and terrible. Then, without warning, the music fell into a shuddering gulf of silence. Once more, Elaine found herself alone. It is not wise to love an elven knight, sighed the old woman as she stepped into the clearing. My love is immortal, cried Elaine tearfully, and she told her of Tamlin's plight. I must find a way to save him. There is a way, replied the crone, but one with a terrible cost. As a girl, I lived in a kingdom far from here. I was wild and carefree and loved a lad with all my heart, but one night the elven queen and her court stole into our country. For seven dreadful years, youths and maidens fell prey to her enchantments, including the youth I loved. I vowed to save him. On All Hallows Eve, the night the elven court had to leave, I crept into the forest and tried to drag him away. The elven queen's anger was terrible. Once he was in my arms, she changed my love into a bucking stag, but I held on. Then he became a snarling wolf, but I would not let go. But then she turned him into a pillar of fire, scorching my flesh and choking me. I could not hold him no more. Tears streamed from her eyes. I released my love and lost him forever. Now I follow wherever they wander, warning those who would forget their own world to dance in the elven throng. Tomorrow night is All Hallows' Eve. Just before dawn, the elven court will gather to leave the glade. To save Tamlin, you must find him and pull him from his horse. Do not let go of him, no matter what shape he may become, till the enchantment is broken. But be warned, said the old woman, if you succeed, the queen's anger will be so great she will take your life in his stead. That is the cost. Only your heart knows if you are strong enough for such a trial. The day passed cold and dreary. Storm clouds hung low in the sky, and an autumn drizzle cast a chill blanket on the countryside. Elaine sat alone in her room, gazing pensively out at the gray pall covering the night wood. As darkness fell, shutters were barred, doors bolted, and the castle grew still. Hour after hour, Elaine sat motionless. When the clock struck the hour before dawn, she threw on her cloak and hurried down the winding stair, letting herself out into the darkness. At the edge of the glade, she hid herself and waited. Suddenly, the sound of hooves filled the night, and the sky broke and the moon emerged from the clouds. The elven court had assembled. In the half-light, she could barely make out the riders. How shall I find Tamlin among so many, she cried. Then, dancing above the sound of the hooves, she caught the tinkle of bells, nine bells, swinging at the waist of a knight riding beside the elven queen. Tamlin! Tamlin! cried Elaine as she rushed forward, seizing the bridle and pulling the rider to the ground. There arose an unearthly cry, Tamlin's been stolen away! Tamlin's been stolen away! Elaine clasped Tamlin to her in a fierce embrace. She felt him change. A ferocious bear, huge and hairy, was suddenly in her arms. It roared and twisted, trying to shake her off. Elaine held on. The bear vanished. She was clasping a terrified dove, beating at her with its wings. The dove turned into a huge serpent, hissing and coiling its body around her. Elaine felt her hands slipping along its cold, waxy scales, but she would not let go. The serpent changed into a fiery brand, scorching her flesh and burning into the very bones of her fingers. Elaine moaned with pain. Without letting go, she staggered to a pool at the edge of the clearing and thrust the rod into the icy water. The spell was broken. Her arms were around Tamlin once more. The elven queen's eyes glowed with rage. You have stolen my knight, she screamed. For that you will pay with your life. The queen raised her hand, ready to strike the breath from the girl's body. But the blow never came. 
At the very moment the queen's hand was about to fall, a sharp cry split the darkness. The cock's crow announced the first sweet rays of dawn. Away! Away! cried the assembly. We must away! The dawn has cheated me! cried the queen. Farewell, Tamlin. I thought no power greater than the queen of the elves. I was wrong. The power of mortal love is greater. With a wave of her hand, the elfin queen and her followers vanished into the shadows, never to be seen in the wood again. The briar that had choked the nightwood soon crumbled, and when the robin announced the end of winter, the forest bloomed more splendidly than ever before. An arbor of wild roses grew in the glade where the lovers first met, and there, on the first day of spring, Elaine and Tamlin were married amidst great rejoicing.